Your search for the mysterious gunman has brought you to a strange blend of seasons. Around you, rotting leaves litter the ground in abundance, yet the trees are fully lush with greenery. The seasons themselves seem to be clashing together, attempting to gain dominance over this portion of the forest. The luster of this place doesn't hold you long, however. A snap of a musket and the impact of a cartridge against the small mound next to you brings your attention to hill further on your left. As, suddenly, the man, uh, fires again, it hits. Ah! He tosses the, uh, musket onto the floor, and then seems to skitter off back a bit. He, uh, skitters off. Moving, 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 and finding his way back there. Uh, okay. I guess what Buru's gonna do first is he's gonna run over these guns. Are these loaded? You know what? Buru's gonna take a long shot. He's gonna rest it on his arm and tr try and line up a shot on the guy and just test if it's actually loaded and see okay. if you can get him from this distance. All right, you click and nothing happens. These two are not loaded. That's a damn shame, but I can still beat him to death with them. <laughs> you know what? Brew is actually going to put them in the... He's going to start putting the guns in the uh, barrel of the cannon. He's going to start making a quiver. <laughs> a gun stuffed with guns. <laughs> Alrighty. Do you move uh, any further up, or...? Uh, Brew's going to stay here for now, simply because he's... He doesn't want to get too far away from the rest of the group so something bad happens. Also, in case when it's my turn, which is now if she can heal... <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, okay. Fix our boo-boos, please. So you want to give her to her turn? Okay. Uh, she starts channeling something. Uh, a magic forming around her. Definitely divine. Um, she puts it down and holds it to the earth, and suddenly flowers seem to spring and spread, and then uh, you all feel rejuvenated. Well, quite a lot, actually. Everyone restore 5 HP. Hey! Oh. That's juicy. Appreciate that. Tapped Ooh. out for that one, she leans back against the rock and kind of tries to move a bit to the side, staying out of range. Sorry to hear that, but we really appreciate it. Ugh. If that guy hadn't yelled at us, I'd be at full health. <laughs> <laughs> that godly uh, magic is actually some pretty good stuff. She'll, like, opens and closes her hand. Thanks. Yeah. Um, sh I'm gonna give it to Gunman now, because he's mm -hmm. over there. He, uh... He sifts through and pulls up a gun, and then fires it directly down. And uh, he's going to aim at Buru, since Buru's the closest. There is... Okay, you're not directly. It's still a far-off shot, um, but even with the negative I'd put on that, yeah. So he does manage to hit you, and you take two damage, and you're good to roll. <laughs> and he's going to pass it off to show. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Let's move my full movement up here. She's gonna grab the gun, um, check. She's not gonna check if it's loaded. She's just gonna throw it to Buru. <laughs> Thank you. Just puts it in right. his uh, new quiver. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, she's going to uh, lock out a dice to move six more. And she's gonna basically like hide in the cover of this tree. All right, yeah. You hide under the cover of the tree and that allows you enough uh, cover to avoid getting shot by him next turn. Fantastic. Uh, she's going to pass to Junia. Junia looks, tries to see this guy through all the trees and barely can. Oh, it's Tentomushi all over again. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no one kept the Tentomushi memory. No. <laughs> we all wanted to forget. We all <laughs> wanted, yeah. So, Hideo. Mm-hmm. We've all been trying new things today. <laughs> I, oh, I personally have been flung bodily twice. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. Hey, look over there! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah. Give me a... Can uh... I also move? Yes, yes, you can move as well. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Junior's just gonna kind of... Junior's gonna crouch down behind this rock after launching Hideo as uh, pretty much wherever he wants to go. Cool. Uh, and I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna hide uh, like on the tree, mm -hmm. like okay. up in the up in the branches yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, I think Hideo is the only one still to act this round, so I'll pass it to Hideo. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Uh, I'm going to hop from branch to branch. Okay. Uh, and uh, land on this one, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a slappy. Okay, give him a slappy. I'm going to assume that uh, he is operating on the uh, principle that most people 
operate on where uh, they don't look up um, and yeah. hopefully be able to uh, sneak jump like Inazuma drop him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you you fucking drop him. Yeah, you just, you just like slam down and it's like, oh, his the hat on his head shakes as he's just like dropped and he just like stumbles to the side very slightly. Uh, yeah. So uh, so Jordan. yeah, so I I jump down. I I jump down from above and I I kind of like slam him onto the ground. Like the goal is to get him basically prone. Like I just fly out of the I fly out of the branch. I I. Uh, and then I hit him with like a, a, a an arm drag, like pro wrestling style. And <laughs> yeah. uh, not, uh, when I knock him on the ground, I draw my sword, and uh, I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna po- poke for a fleshy bit. All right, sounds fair. As you go into slice, uh, he now seeing you kind of just ducks and weaves, dodging back. You push him back against this rock slightly, as you just keep the pressure on him, and then show you see an opportunity. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, yeah, Show's going to try to follow up. She's going to... Uh, Show, actually, the moment oh. that you walk that way. Oh. Um, you uh, take some steps forward, and you sense some movement behind you. You... something seems to shift and shake as hidden under leaves, an oil slick is revealed. But no, <laughs> that's not an oil slick. That's alive. Oh, fuck. <laughs> As you uh, suddenly start moving forward, you you see something. Something emerging out from the oil. It forms together, making an actual physical form behind you immediately. Um, as this guy is here now. Oh, boy. <laughs> what would you like to do? Oh, God. Um... That thing. What? What is? What is like the impression she gets? Just looking you get at it. the impression of death, a black void. Nothing. Like the world itself just seems to suck into this thing very passively. The atmosphere is destroyed as you look at this thing. It's almost painful to look at, um, and all it. It seems to be quirling. It's just a mass of oil that seems to mix together into this humanoid form, somehow combining itself that can weigh that can walk and it starts moving very slowly show show looks at this thing and she all of her hair stand on end and um her instincts as a swordsman scream cut it strike it down do something because a swordsman only knows how to cut however something surpasses her instinct as somebody who follows the blade and that is something primal and human. Her her gut screeches and tells her to run. She is going to, uh, she's gonna double move again this turn. Okay. Uh, lock and lock out another thing, but she sure is gonna cut this guy on the way out. Yeah, sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she turns her back on this thing. Honestly, like a point a point of like a dishonor that would make her father fucking wince. Uh, hand on sword, and she's just gonna try to cut through this man and move past. So as you run, uh, that moment of hesitation gave him enough time to slip back into the, uh, the bushes, and he kind of disappears for that moment, and he steals the initiative. Yes, I'm still gonna move my additional six. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely fair. <laughs> I am fucking off. Okay, you're done. <laughs> yeah, uh, you notice that, uh, as you run, he kind of Ends up just running, like, right next to you, basically. Oh, uh, you know, oh no, when you both try to leave, but you go the same direction. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is this is awkward. He moves, like, one, he notices where you're standing and smiles. He pulls out a match, rubs it against his, uh, one of his gems on his face, and it lights somehow. Oh, um, and he tosses it down right at your feet. Where, this time, yes, it is just an oil slick. <laughs> Show's gonna prep herself and go into crane style and try to attempt to cut the match out of the air. You cut it out of the air and he's like, damn, okay. He just starts... <laughs> you know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, he's gonna burn one of his pulses to keep moving. Oh, he gets fucker. up to his, uh, to his top thing and grabs a rifle and then layers it down. He can't shoot, though, since he already did his action. Turn about his fair play. Guess I'll fuck off. Uh, Ink Boy, kind of looking around, he stares uh, at the closest. Show ran in fear and was thinking of going after them, but uh, someone within actual range, uh, he sees Hideo over there, and he starts stepping over. 
Does he walk like a normal person, or does he like ink glide or something? Or Silent Hill jitter. So the thing is, right now, is that there seems to be a lot of effort to walk gracefully and normally, despite being some strange sort of being. It seems to walk like a normal human. Uh, and as he steps up, suddenly a sword emerges from his shoulder, and he grabs it by the hilt and swings it out. You manage to deflect the blow that was going straight for your jugular. Truly a legendary swordsman. <laughs> Seeing the that there's apparently oil under some of these leaves, he's going to try to play the floor is lava and bound over to this rock rather than <laughs> running through the leaves. Yeah, absolutely fair. Um, and then I think I will push myself to move again, so I'll lock out blue. All right. And get over to about here. Mm -hmm. And um, Junya has... Uh, has been studying the foliage as we've been going. Mm -hmm. It's, uh... It's, you know, there's, there's like, species of tree and bushes here that he had never even seen outside uh, the Forbidden Woods, even in all his travels. Mm -hmm. And he's learned a little bit about how he can use the landscape. So I think he's going to draw uh, Yuko's katana, and with a series of swift strikes... He's going to strategically slash at this... Uh, is this a tree or just a bush in front a of bush. him? A bush. He's going to strategically slash at this bush and basically try to send a, uh, a torrent of leaves. Basically, like, dice this thing and propel it forward and just fire a ray of bush at this guy <laughs> to disorient that's my him. Favorite, that's okay. my favorite third-level D&D spell. A ray <laughs> of bush. <laughs> Um, yeah, you cut up this great storm. It's honestly pretty impressive. And as you do that, uh, you notice that this thing, I'm going to give you something for this. This okay. thing is unhampered. Its movements are generally unhampered by any sort of terrain or otherwise. So in this moment, its body seems to mold and twist as it pushes past. And it only moves here. That's it. Only a side step. And yet its arm stretches out and a cut goes right across your chest. A deep cut causing Ooh. blood to spill, and that Whoa. is, ooh, 14 damage. <gasps> that was, I guess that was in character. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, no. Buru, um, you're standing down there, and you're getting ready. Oh, shit, Juju just got wrecked. You need to get up there. Um, as you do that, you take one step forward, and then you stop. It's... You don't know what it is. You oh, no. Honestly, your eyes are a bit too slow to really catch up to it, but you sense it. The moment that the swing was incoming, it became one with reality. The intent was to attack a living creature. The invisibility would no longer laugh. You hold up your Tetsubo, and a large clang echoes across the entire hill as Tetsubo meets Tetsubo. Yeah! Uh -oh. <laughs> she was not expecting you to block, and you weren't expecting it coming, so you're both just kind of stuck there as the metal tings together. Uh, she withdraws slightly. It's a bit awkward, yeah, but now it's your turn since you're the last person to go. Nice horns and good choice of weapon. Same to you. Yeah. It's a shame. I'm, I'm probably gonna kill you, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Yeah. Uh, she pulls back her Tetsubo as well as you both stand on this tiny little hill. She waits. Yeah, no, uh, Buru, uh... <laughs> He's gonna pull the cannon into his other arm, and he's gonna basically go dual wield and try and use the weight of both of these things to start spinning and start trying to Beyblade crush her into the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you go in and you manage to block. She blocks, but she's still rocked by your blow, causing her to tumble down the hill and uh, kind of have to stumble and stand up again. Okay. Uh, then if that's the case, uh, Buru is going to... Uh, keep spinning, get close to her, um, and he's gonna try and go for a, uh, <laughs> he's gonna try and trip her with a Tetsubo, and while she's in mid-flight, grab her by the shirt and throw her as far back as possible into this rock to get her away from Mai, because she's okay. fully tapped out. So, you start going down for a swing, and the moment you go, she's just suddenly, whoosh, gone? No, she's behind you? And you hear a cling regardless, however. You impact something. 
and a gust of wind occurs right up against your Tetsubo as a large figure with a giant ring metal in her hand blocks, wind seeming to twist around it and turn and uh, just kind of tear at your Tetsubo. Um, she looks at you. She's she's salivating? <sighs> Cow flank, good. <laughs> Ribs, hungry. Compared to the other one, she's very easy to hit. And you uh... smack her on the side and she's like... <clears throat> But uh, as you just kind of impact the side, she kind of grabs it and pushes your Tetsubo away. You did hit her, and it looks like she's, like, pushing off the damage a bit. You got a good hit, though. You can tell that, at least. Wow, so many pretty ladies in the same situation. More horns than eyes. Junya <laughs> <laughs> uh, climbs back onto this rock uh, and kind of looks down in disbelief at the giant split across his formerly immaculate kimono and the I'm gonna say green blood? He's a reptile? I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah. Yes, all lizards have green blood. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah, um, it's that, money. That's how it works in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, um... He sort of, he puts his hand there and takes it away, feels blood, and, um, and looks up silently at, uh, at this creature before him. Well, you seem to have gotten the better of me, and it looks like just hitting you with a piece of metal might do very little indeed. That being said... He levels the katana at him. I think you'll find this blade has just a bit of your foul master's essence to work with. And he's going to... He's gonna, like, do a samurai cross-cut through this guy with uh, Yuko's katana. Nice, cool. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I, I feel like there's a, there's a little bit of a bonus I can give to that uh, mm -hmm. as... As uh, as he is uh, preparing to uh, slice forward, I want to run up behind him, uh, run up behind him, and just punch him in the groin as hard as I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, Johnny Cage. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just going to like sure you can uppercut right up into his groin. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you go in and cut for six as you just cut into him and cause a, a gash of the ink to spill. And uh, as you do that, it, its head kind of drifts down and looks, and then it looks back up. I think Junior is just going to finish by kind of pirouetting up onto this rock, uh, whipping the katana to the side to scatter the ink to the forest and leveling it at, uh, at this man's throat. Everyone else is engaged in these pitched, extremely cool battles. Show and this man are just chasing each other, <laughs> fucking comedy style. She's going to run across the battlefield, jump, hop, and slide across the barricade, and attempt to slice through and past him. All right, gotcha. So you go in, and he ducks down, moving beneath you, and then he turns himself back up. And you notice that in his hand, he's got his musket, which he wasn't able to fire. Uh, and instead, he turns to you. Nice try, kid! <laughs> but then, he charges in with his musket. He, uh, kind of switches it around and goes for a swing with it. So, he runs up the hill, and he kind of brings it down, and you block. But then, the moment that you block, he spins the gun around your sword and elbows you, knocking you back against the crate. In that moment, he pushes himself forward and jams the gun's tip right up against you and fires, a shot resounding straight into your cloak. Fucking hell, okay. Show like recoils pressed against the chest. The gunshot goes off. She and can feel her. Uh, the moment that it goes off, you uh, feel it. It's pressing against you. It fires. It's a blank. <laughs> the only thing that hurt was him slamming you against the crates. It's fine. And the, and the heat of the barrel, probably. Yeah, probably that too. Yeah. Oh ah, my god. Fuck! He drops the sword. <laughs> Your life barely spared by pure coincidence. She. Ugh. She hops up on the chest and the two begin swinging at each other with fucking yeah, muskets he grabs, and swords. <laughs> yeah, he grabs the other musket next to him and you just start going at it. As Inkspot goes, he kind of steps to the side a bit. And as he does so, uh, you notice that he's kind of like standing. He considers one sword in his hand. Suddenly his body vibrates and shakes. 
Another sword emerges. He looks between the two of you, and he's going to attack you both. Oh. It keeps swinging. It engages you both in melee, splitting its attention between the two of you, seeming to not really feel any sort of fatigue by that fact, and manages to hold you both while, at the same time, she goes in and begins swinging on her own, going in and... Uh, trying to slam into your back with a Tetsubo. Uh, Buru is the type that learns pretty quickly when it comes to a fight, just from his years of experience. So what he go what he goes to do is he is bring the Tetsubo down vertically. So Blue comes in like that. But instead, what he does with the fully loaded cannon ready, he lines it up so that she blocks the Tetsubo, but the cannon is pressed into her elbow and attempting to blast the weakest part of her arm off. Ooh. Oh. 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 Uh, Blue sees that coming and tries to push Red aside, basically, trying to block. Um, and she does manage to get Red aside, but that puts her hand right where that cannon is. And you fire the cannon blasting, and the hand flies off. The arm goes off, too, as the one cannonball you had ready is just... Or I guess it's the muskets. Yeah, it's loaded with the muskets. Buru's got, like, the, the cannonball, like, off on the side, ready to go for something later. He's got something else in yeah. mind. Uh, the muskets fly through, like, shrapnel, piercing in her uh, arm at multiple points. She stumbles back. Huh? No. No, that's not right. No. Buru takes a, uh, pulls out his pipe, lights it, and smiles. Actually, I'm pretty sure that is your right. <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> what a fucker. Yeah. So <laughs> she she stumbles back, uh, her arm uh, limp now. She holds the pulls out another ring from her back on her left arm, this one glowing hot with fire. Um, she tries to go in again. She brings down the ring and the fire ignites on it, and it just starts singeing into your body as she cuts across. Uh, so yeah, uh, while, while, uh, Junya and I are, uh, like, you know, sword fighting with, uh, with this guy, uh, Hideo's going to, uh, sort of, like, like, try to maneuver himself towards, like, this side, uh, and, uh, like with uh, with Junya, he's going to he's going to shout out and say, "Hey, let's switch places," uh, and uh, try to stab into the guy. So like we both stab into him from our ends, and then mm -hmm. we sp and then we like spin around and switch places. Oh, nice! <laughs> oh, dope! You tear the cloth on its body, and ink seems to spill out on the ground as you do that. Um, and you look at it, and this thing just seems to be spilling more and more ink on its body. And now you get to go again. Cool. Uh, while uh, while we're while we're like meeting swords through this through this inky fellow's face, uh, we're uh, we're we're basically like sword fighting each other through him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll be like, uh, and and so I'm going to uh, shout to the ink monster as I'm attacking. Uh, watch your legs, and then I'm going to slice him in the face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you uh, you cut into him, and yeah, you you slice the head straight off, and the uh, the ink just falls down to the floor, and then, as if almost kind of reforming, that part of the head stays, but the rest of the body reforms, and its head seems to go and. Something seems very different about it now. It seems pissed. Uh -oh. And its body starts vibrating as different forms of ink start to fill across. <sighs> okay. So we've been we've been fighting like this uh, across mm. this man and um, Junia stops for just a moment in the brief lull while it's kind of reforming after Hideo's blow and is sort of breathing a little heavily. Still one one hand on the sword and one hand at his, uh, the wound on his chest. <sighs> you know, uh, we've, we've never actually fought back to back like this, have we? Or front to front, I suppose. <laughs> <coughs> this is, we should do this more often. Um... And uh, as the as the creature reforms, I think uh, Junya is going to um, remind me. Did I in in universe? Did I ever get rid of the telescoping parasol? Did I give mm, it up? Yes, yes, you did. <sighs> you did. All right, all right. That's fine. Um, 
he uh, he winces and takes one hand off of his wound. So he's got sword in one hand. He pulls uh, he pulls an umbrella out of his pack with the other. Not a not a super fancy one, just uh, just a normal one. But he opens it to its maximum extension, so that it's actually like basically inverted the way it might be if it was in a, ho- a huge gust. And as this creature still has a giant hole through it, he's gonna reach through the creature and offer the end of this parasol to Hideo. Why don't you come over here for a moment? Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> grabs on. Grabs on. Junior reverses it and yanks Hideo uh, to his side, and he's gonna just do a. He's basically going to hit the deck and uh, pull Hideo down behind this rock along with himself. Whoop. Okay, nice. And and hit the deck, and I'm going to activate the fucking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh boy. As this thing goes, it seems infuriated as two more tendril arms appear, barely grasping as they drip. It seems to have two sides now, and two tendrils just seem to hang at the side too. As absolutely infuriated, the thing approaches you, moving forward. It stands up, moves, and you weather the fucking As you swing in, you weather this ultimate barrage of blows as six arms come in with different weapons and swing. It pushes in furiously. Anger, this thing, this lifeless abomination, for a split moment, it feels true rage as it rains down hell upon the both of you. And yet you hold the fucking line and you manage to push it back. Yeah, I, I like to imagine this ends with giant blade coming down and each of us reaches up to block it so it's like a three-way cross impact of our swords and its sword and it does and it goes in and that fucking happens <laughs> show is balanced on top of the chests now like i assume there's like fucking rifles flying through the air she's yeah. going to try to close distance and cut through everything and stab this man she's going to uh she's going to close the distance and then from her normally aijutsu stance actually let the blade sort of free hang at her side and uh, she's gonna swap to Hijizuru style. Ooh, Ooh, nice. You go in, going in with Hijizuru style. He raises up and fails to clash <laughs> against it. What happens? <laughs> um, she is going to, yeah, she relaxes her arm and instead of trying to focus on defense, instead of trying to form up her body, you can't fucking defend against a gun. So screw it, all out offense, that's the only option. She loosens her entire body and almost like a whip, swings her arm down and you hear a crack as she divides three rifles in half and swings sliding to the ground, bracing her back up against the barricade. Well, you cut through three muskets, but you cut through something else too. You cut through him. <laughs> he held up the gun to try to block and you slice through it. And as you see the hat divide, you realize you carved straight down through the brain pan down to the neck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> The body loosely falls and rolls down the hill as it impacts against the wood. She she sl- uh, flicks the blood off of her sword and slowly sheathes it. Then turns around just in time to see the fucking happen. <laughs> She's like, uh, oh. <laughs> just in time to see the fucking uh, Susano phase transition mechanic yeah. happening over here. <laughs> She, like, 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 having defeated this man, she does puff up with pride for a second, then sees that happening, and she's like, I can't even process that. <laughs> <laughs> the Blue Oni, after being injured, Boo, you look, you notice the blood, uh, very dark red spilling out from her arm. Um, just a mental note to keep. But the other one goes mm-hmm. in and tries to leap down and attack you with, uh, their own weapon. Okay. Uh... Buru is going to let her go for the attack, but instead of bringing his Tetsubo down, he actually lets go. So it just loses the all momentum and just hits her hand deeper into the ground. But then he's going to actually use the weight of the cannon to spin himself and hurl himself up to her horns. And with his feet, push down to the back of her head and pull back as hard as he can to like break her neck and basically <gasps> dislocate the upper jaw. <laughs> oh. Just... <laughs> Yeah, you go in and hold that, and with that momentum, the momentum coming together of all of your fighting for the past few minutes, you swing in and pull, and there's a resounding crack, louder than any other bone you've heard in your life, as she tumbles down the hill. Um, 
as that happens, uh, the other Oni realizing what happens. No! She holds herself down and tries to swing, but of course that's her turn. Yeah, I like to think that Buru crashes and he's he's trying to keep that that speed rolling, but he's like, oh fuck, that lost a lot of it. Yeah, no, Buru Buru's just gonna go for just a, a classic smack. Putting all of her strength and her fury into this last block, yet at the same time you see the beginning of tears and just frustration. It seems that she's lost her focus, yet is still trying to swing into the best she can. So we're still he's still got the he's still pulling the weight of those swords down and we're we're clashing against that, holding it yeah. up. And uh I'm going to uh reach into my cloak with my with my free hand and uh and go, here, have a pepper. Uh and uh, I'm just gonna <laughs> press it right into him. Oh no. Oh jeez, okay. <laughs> the the magic of the pepper seems to infuse and distract him in that moment. It doesn't seem like it's gonna hurt him, but it kinda seems to like disrupt him slightly like his body is like starting to fold in on it like it's trying to Whoa. consume and destroy it mm -hmm. and so uh while it's doing that uh i'm going to uh i'm just going to look over at junia and say uh, uh i'm just gonna look over at junia and say uh, uh release and uh so like we pull we both pull back at the same time forcing him to like have his momentum uh like you know force himself uh yeah. To hunch over, and uh, as he does that, I'm going to, uh, I I'm just going to press the blade to his, uh, I'm, I'm going to press the blade back to his head and just be like, all right, second verse, same as the first, and I'm just going to cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you cut it off. The next seems to, like, this time prepared for it, it kind of separates and reforms around the blade as it goes. This time his head was prepared for it, and he turns, the head turning completely around, the sight not with his body. Red Oni, furious and going in, attempts to swing down at Buru, who is currently without color. You, uh, tense up and slam your fists together, holding them in as the Tetsubo goes down. The Tetsubo, previously cracked, dented, and broken apart in pieces by your Tetsubo dueling, you bring it in, and as it impacts, you stop it and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze, and then... Instantly, the Tetsubo in her hand cracks. You break it in half with your muscle alone. As the Tetsubo breaks and falls to the ground, you lock yourself back in red immediately. Oh, God. All right, no. Yeah, so Buru clocks her in the face. Uh, when she hits the dirt back first, he pulls up the cannon, puts the, bar uh, the ball back inside, and will bring it down barrel first over her head. So all you hear is a tinny scream, and then... <laughs> from the cannonball <laughs> crushing her face. God, done. He, he just leans and he rests against the cannon, uh, takes a big puff from his pipe. I thought she was the blue one. Show's going to, uh, show's gonna run up and grab one of the muskets, like mm -hmm. one of the intact ones, uh, one of the ones that was part of his special barricade and she's gonna try to aim it at this thing, realizes okay. like, no, I'm never going to hit that. <laughs> no universe am I ever going to hit that. She's going to grab the musket, run out, sprint as fast as possible, and then fucking javelin toss it to her friends down here. <laughs> All right, nice. Uh, let's aim for Hideo. <laughs> Hideo, you re you kind of notice show. Do you call him out then, basically? Yep. You hear a call out. Hideo, you turn, and you grasp that gun in the middle of the air. And now, uh, it's either... Ink Man or Junior? Uh, who should we do? Should we do Ink Man first? <sighs> I. You probably, you probably don't want Ink Man to go twice. Yeah, we don't want him to go twice. Oh, I'm so tempted to go for it. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> do you wanna. If you wanna. If you wanna go for it, we can try. Go for it. I have a plan. Okay, Junior. <laughs> okay. If it's okay, if he goes twice, he'll only kill me. <laughs> probably. <laughs> um. All right, um, Junya, as uh, as Hideo and uh, the Ink Man are locked in combat over there, Junya wanders over to this tree, runs his hand along the bark for a bit, and grasps a shoot off of it, just the, the smallest branch he can find. And um, as, as he and Hideo struggle against one another, he walks up slowly behind this man and just lightly, with a gardener's care, just sticks it into uh, straight into like the small of his back. Uh huh. You know, there's <laughs> there's a uh, 
interesting properties to many of the plants in these forests. <laughs> I've noticed, like the yokai here, many of them are infused with godly energy. <laughs> the most curious thing. They can be not only beautiful, but ah, uh, to certain creatures with antithesis of that essence. Hmm. Tragically deadly. You slam it in at that moment, putting it all the way through, and as you do it, the energy seems to radiate, as the ink's body seems to start spasming rapidly. It's a fight, a battle amongst itself, inside of itself trying to fight, but at this point, there's too little ink left to do it. Instead, it does the next best thing. It separates. The body seems to explode outward, blasting across the entire surroundings, covering trees, ground, you, the dirt, rocks, and everything, as the final one is defeated. Jesus and uh, Hideo catches the gun, turns around, and gets ready to shoot it, and then sees that <laughs> Junior's there. Oh, oh, uh, well, good work, Master. <laughs> oh, and you said, you said that those plants of mine present a lie, but I think you'll find that. <sighs> <laughs> just pitches forward <laughs> onto the ground. Into... <laughs> Master, you said that. Uh, <laughs> leans over, picks him up. Leans uh, over, checks on him. <sighs> How's it going with that thing? What's going on? Oh. oh my god, June, are you we, okay? We got him. We got him. Hold on. Uh, as as Junior falls, he almost touch. He almost lands in the, the puddle of ink, but Hideo reaches under real quick to catch him so that his kimono doesn't touch the ink. <laughs> Alright, let's rest you over here. Uh. <sighs> How's Buru? Uh, Buru actually is now moving on up, uh, and Mai is also on his side, kind of moving up, yeah, using his support, and kind of supporting him up a bit as too, as yeah. you both end up regrouping. Come on, you're doing all right there. Mm-hmm. Yes. You're doing quite well as yourself, actually. That went a lot better than I expected, and if I hadn't gotten your help earlier, I don't know if it would have gone too well. Oh, yeah. She stumbles on up. Excellent work. We good? How are you kids doing? Oh my god, Junior. <laughs> all of you, actually. You okay? Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm completely fine. He loaded a blank and then kind of missed with it. Oh, thank god for that. <sighs> Seems like June got it the worst. Yeah. Here, come on, kiddo. Uh, Buru oh. reaches over to help Junius sit upright. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. You okay? Oh. Uh, yeah, I. My robe. Um. Uh, I saved what of it I could. I felt you, and I appreciate it. <laughs> We'll, we'll patch it up when we get back to town. Is everyone able to walk? Yeah, I, I'm i actually doing okay. I didn't get hit too much. <laughs> Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> Good. And I sit there and I'm like, bitch, I was fast. <laughs> Bur Buru's got a big toothy grin, takes a big puff from his pipe again. That's because you're the best damn swordsman in Raoji, and don't you forget it. How could I? <laughs> How could you? I I don't mean to be a rush, but we need to move. No, I completely yeah. agree. Oh boy. And none of these things were arms. Um, I don't know about this one, but Buru pulls the cannonball out that crushed the woman's head. Is it black with blood or is it red? It's red. Mm. And yeah, show the the blood that spilled from the man's cranium was indeed red. A little pink too. It was kind of gross. Yeah, it was pretty gross. She's mm. not gonna think about that. So was only. <laughs> Wait, who was this guy? What was this? He like points at the ink because he never saw this guy. <laughs> oh. Uh, your guess is as good as ours. All right. Well, do you think he's the only arm then? 
Uh, I, I couldn't even tell you if he was an arm. He didn't really seem like much of anything, to be honest. Like, yeah, he's made of the ink and stuff, but I don't know if the squid is able to make homunculi or whatever it was. Hmm. Uh, Junior, do you, do you need a hand? Uh, I, I wouldn't turn you down. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, you loser. Boo, you're, Boo's gonna princess carry Junior. No, no, I was the winner. <laughs> oh, you, you certainly won. I'm not knocking you for that, and bravo for it. But, you, damn. You can be a winner and a loser at the same time. <laughs> the lady looks down at these, um, saying, hmm, it seems they set up barricades here, so we, if this was their final line, then we shouldn't be too far away. That's an upside, I guess. Any sort of supplies in this that we could use? Like guns a sandwich? and ammunition. Or Lots sandwich. of guns. Anything this guy other is, than a gun. This guy has packed literally like over 50 guns. Anything, like anything edible in here. Like, no. It's all guns. This is all guns. This is all literally guns. all guns. All fucking guns. <laughs> Oops, all guns. I'll take that. That sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I I open up I uh I, I open up one of the uh the ammo crates and basically <laughs> just like grab uh, uh, as many bullets as I can reasonably carry and put it in a bag. Yeah, you grab bullets, um car- pepper cartridges and um uh powder cartridges and then you get all that as much as you can. Yeah. I'm and... sure if you can even use one of those things. I wouldn't know where to put the shooty part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yes, with that you, once again, passing past this barrier, you move further inside. And, oh, wait, wait, I forgot, oh, shit, I forgot one thing. Hang on. Um, as you all, uh, as you all depart, uh, this place, um... Oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the black, inky substance now left alone begins to slowly crawl away deeper into the forest. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I knew that fucker would come back. <laughs> yeah, we should have known better. No, this is more interesting. It, it sure is, but we should have known better. <laughs> is that right? Mm-hmm. The three approach. Well, swordsman, I'm rather excited to see your magic at hand. It's not mine. He uh, pulls out a sword. And then, tosses it over to Mr. Gray, who kind of like, what fumbles? What the fuck? Hey, what? You're supposed to do this shit, right? I'm afraid this is a bit too much godly magic for me to handle. It'll probably take two of us. <sighs> he kind of reads, God. And the jellyfish swordsman pulls out his second blade. Both of these seem interesting. One with a um, handle that seems to denote lightning. The other, water. Both of them stand together, and in that moment, they... Hold, both of them kind of taking a similar stance. Mr. Gray just kind of copying over exactly what the jellyfish swordsman does, almost perfectly. He seems to be rather skilled at this. That's what the jellyfish swordsman remarks. He never won to fight Mr. Gray in a one on one fight by the looks of him. He'd be a pretty tough opponent. But his musings aside, they both look forward, and with a strike, their magic energy of the, the squid god infusing with the magic energy of the blades. Unholy anathema and godly energy combine into one, and two strikes ring out. The barrier, something that has been enforced, reinforced over and over again, centuries, by the power of all twelve of the gods left. This, which has made a barrier to the secret internal sanctum of this forest. A prison for a special item. They slice it to ribbons. And, on the other side... ...is revealed the final layer. Whew! Wow. Glad it worked. He steps on through the water, nonchalantly, and so too follows the swordsman. And uh, he also le- gives a hand, lends a hand for the old man to help him across the water. Um, and now that the three of them move across, they begin moving up once more. Stepping into this land that is so almost mind-numbingly pink. The very grass itself seems to be staying the same color as the trees and the petals that litter the floor. This place, even the grass, seems an unnatural hue of green to it. This entire place is bleeding with energy that is beyond just natural, to say the least. Um, The old man looks around, gazing at this area. Quite interesting. 
This entire place seems to be almost infused with just ambrosial. Absolutely a magical place. Um, as they all take steps forward, they move further inside. They find themselves to the very center of this forest. 